Welcome to Mining the Gold. Scripture's truths are like nuggets of gold in a reserve. To be its best, gold must be mined, refined, and designed as coins, jewelry, and the like. The truths of scripture, to be their best, must also be mined, refined, and designed. Mined as we apply them to real life situations. Refined as we identify which biblical precepts are greater than our cultural practices. And designed for us as family members, neighbors, members of society at large while we're forging the relationship we get to enjoy with our God. I'm Denise Watts, author of Mining the Gold and today's teaching host. And I'm Pam Craddock and I'm co-hosting with Denise today. Pam, thank you so much for all you have invested into these past. This is the fourth session with you and just touching an, an unorthodox subject applying the word of God to it, and hopefully encouraging and challenging our viewers to apply God's word to their lives as citizens of what, this country especially, but whatever country they happen to live in. And to those of you who are watching, thank you for giving us this time as we look together in God's word and its application to our lives. Today's lesson comes from chapter four, the Holy Spirit. This is topic 10. It tells us that the Holy Spirit bears fruit in believers. Our scripture reference is Galatians 5, 22 to 23. Today, we're looking in the New American Standard Bible for our text. It tells us, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things, there is no law. On my first visit to Florida, I marveled at the orange trees that were everywhere in the subdivision where my aunt lived. Then I learned that not all the trees I was seeing were orange trees. Some were lemon trees. Some were grapefruit trees. Without their flowers or fruit, they all looked alike to these novice eyes. Seeing those trees gave me greater appreciation for the saying, you will know the tree by the fruit it bears. The tree is identified by its fruit. It bears only the fruit that belongs there. Apples don't grow on pear trees. Bananas don't grow on lemon trees. The tree bears the fruit that matches what it is. When Paul tells the church at Galatia what the fruit of the spirit is, he is giving the Christ follower some strong teachings. One, as with any fruit bearing tree, there is one fruit of the spirit, love. Look at the forms of the words. The fruit is, not the fruits are. The Holy Spirit bears the fruit of love in the Christ follower. The fruit of love is multidimensional. Love manifests as joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Every Christ follower is to bear the fruit of love in all 
of its dimensions. The fruit is produced in the Christ follower, not by the Christ follower. I do not have to make myself loving. You do not need to force love to be there if you are a Christ follower. The Holy Spirit within you is producing love. It may take a while for the fruit to appear. Although even young trees will bear some fruit. A tree must be healthy in order to bear its fruit. It needs to be in the proper soil and properly nourished. In the case of a Christ follower, the proper soil is a heart fully surrendered to Christ. The proper nourishment is the word of God. That is the combination that fosters a healthy Christ follower. Without the fruit, there is no spirit. Your fruit tells it all. And that is today's mining of the gold in God's word. So Denise, it has my favorite word in there. Which That's one? Her. Joy. This is there joy. You go. Yes. But the fruit of the spirit, oh, so the outcome, right? That which is produced, the fruit, like the fruit of your labors, the fruit of all, the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience. This is an amazing verse. Kindness, goodness, <laughs> faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things, there is no law, right? So, wow. That says an awful lot in one sentence with a few semicolons. But at the end of the day, this is this has got to be your why. Mm -hmm. uh, and and your ha it's, a, it's a combination of your why and your how. Because, yes. yeah, because the how part is when you can take yourself above the things to just focus on the joy of your message and patience because people are not going to get it, you know, right away. They're not going to get it. Maybe some might, but others are, you know, I've, and one of the joys of being in the learning profession is seeing when you can physically hear or see the light bulb go off in someone's head. Oh, I get it. And they understand that dawn of understanding and they're believing. And, and, you know, all of these, it's just a, that this is one of the best verses I think I've ever seen because this is, it, it has it all. It has it all. So when we think about how to apply biblical citizenship, this is a lot about the what, but it's an awful lot about the how. Yeah. Taking it into that that realm of um, of where you need to be to influence people, to get them to at least hear your point of view. If they don't have to agree with it, but at least hear it so that we can have these conversations. We are not Right now, we are not having conversations. It's either hate speech or people just say, I don't want to hear it. Go away from me. And, and so if we can't even get them to listen, well, it's going to be a long road. And you spoke of the hearing, having them listen to what we're saying, but also for us to genuinely listen to what they are saying. Yes. Even yeah. if we disagree, when we listen, we are better able to some, sometimes to help them see where what they're saying is not really consistent with what they believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and that's a starting place. And then also to look at ourselves and say, are we saying 
what is consistent with what we believe. You know, we talked about how our founding fathers put some lofty principles into the founding documents that we mm -hmm. were not living by as a nation. And they talked about it. And what they said was, we know we're not doing this yet, but we're gonna put it in there so we never forget what we're supposed to be striving for. And sometimes. I, I think, well, some, a key to that is self-control. Yes. Um, Self-evaluation is important, significant. I have to be honest if I'm going to walk in love. You know, a couple of episodes ago, you asked me, what is the first commandment? And I asked you if you meant the first of the 10 commandments or the first and greatest commandment. Because when, and it's actually in the Old Testament, in, in what's called the Shema, Deuteronomy 6, begins with hear O Israel, the Lord our God is one, just like the 10 commandments begins with. But then it says, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Love is the essence of that first and greatest commandment. And it comes back to going back to the 10 commandments, which is, after, is before the Shema, um, more than one time in scripture, it tells us, here's how you know that you love God. You keep his commandments. Several times it's said of God and it's said of Christ. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. So that highest commandment to love has built within it the commandment for obedience in joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Because against those things, there is no law. We're not talking about namby-pamby love, oh, anything you want to do is fine. Right. We're talking about the kind of love God has for us where he loved us so much that he had to had to go ahead and say, you know what, you guys are not worthy. The only way I can get you worthy is to send my son to live among you and show you what worthy looks like. And that's still not gonna be enough because you're gonna kill him. And when I see him die, I am going to not just see him dying. I am going to see everything that is wrong with you dying with him who had nothing wrong so that then I can transfer my perfect love and relationship with him into a perfect love and relationship with you. Love is not easy, but it's the call. It's the high call everything that we do. And there are lots of verses that tell us other ways what love is supposed to look like. This one is to me, like it's the signature verse. This okay. is not a multiple choice question. You can't say I'll have two shots of joy and a shot of peace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, we, it's, um... It's all of this, all of this is the Holy Spirit manifesting in us. Yeah. Yeah. This, this is one way of mining the gold, but it is such a perfect send off to where we're going to go in the second way that we're mining gold with you, Pam. See, we're mining the gold of creativity that God places within each one of us that if we apply this love to what he has given us as gifts and talents and interests and abilities, we will make this world a better and more beautiful place to live for somebody. Yeah. And so today, what were you going to say? I was going to say, I think one thing that, and it harkens back to this conversation I was over overhearing with my adult children um, and I was very disappointed, so I'm glad I have work to do, but there's this notion that things happen to us, 
-hmm. And that's okay. Just, you know, you don't have an active role. I don't know anywhere in the Bible, Old Testament or new, where it's about something's happening to you. You have an active role to play yeah. and you, and, and like be the fruit of the, but the fruit of the spirit is love. Joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness. These are actions mm -hmm. that you take. Um, and it's from the spirit. It's the spirit in you. And the fruit of that spirit is you love, you have joy and you share your joy. You make peace. You have patience. You are kind. You are, you know, and these are just, these are actions that you take. And so when you, when you look at your role in the community, these are actions that you take one way or another. I mean, it doesn't have to be, um, you know, you don't have to be the county judge executive. You can be that person at the, at the meetings that just says, excuse me, I have a question. Can you help me understand something and because they you know that's another little adage uh, from my learning background is you know inevitably in a lecture series people sit there and they don't say anything but they have questions and then when you get to as soon as the class goes on break they they get with somebody that hey did you hear did you understand what they're saying and you know so it has to be you have to have that conversation with somebody else so be that person that sparks the question in the conversation because you ask a question. And I that's where I see things like patience um, and, and self-control. So, you know, you don't need to stand on, stand up in the town square and scream at people. That's not having self-control. Self-control is holding yourself in a way that you can ask a question to get somebody to think hmm i never thought about it like that to look at something from someone else's point of view so exactly and as we turn this over fully to you pam we want you to share with us again a little bit on the edge but how do i as a as a christ follower mm -hmm. you know one who has been told for a long, long time that if I just pray, God will fix it. Mm, no, which but is the not Lord biblical. Without themselves, <laughs> so well, that's I, not I, biblical either. But, no, but I mean, the saying but, it's a good. But as 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 people who've added. been told that, what do we need to be doing? How do we exercise this fruit of the spirit of love? as we engage a political system that is partisan, that has an election process, and that is open to all of its citizens. So I'm pleased to introduce to you now, Pam Craddock, a biblical citizen. Thank you, Denise. Um, and it's an honor to be a biblical citizen because um, it's earned. You earn that. Because you have to, you know, it's 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 not a passive thing, biblical citizenship. You don't just get anointed with biblical citizenship. You know, you have to be involved. So if you look at our, our mantra of educate, empower, engage, okay, we talked about education, we've talked about empowerment. Now we need to talk about engagement, right? And that too is on a spectrum. You don't have to run for office. You can support others who do, or you can just simply be vigilant. Watch watch out for things, you know, use your own strengths. A good friend of mine is a lawyer and she loves to nitpick and pick things, you know, and like look at the law and pick at it and she can call it out. So if, if you see um, as you're, you know, looking at legislation or you're interacting with folks who are looking at legislation, um, you know, if you're paying attention and they posted a bill that they want to pass in your legislation, in your legislature, what's in there? What's in that bill? You know, we've all heard the Nancy Pelosi, you have to pass it so you know what's in it. That's insane. 
you really need to get in there and nitpick. So if you're not that nitpicky person, find some, find that person, establish a relationship with that person who is that nitpicky person that can explain it to you. And so that's one of the reasons why our partisan liber uh, ladies club is a good uh, vehicle for that. But there's an awful lot of how you get there as well, right? So you get there with patience, with self-control, with love, with joy, right? So it's the same thing about, um, you know, if you bring your joy into these conversations and, and all of those things, the patience, the spirit, you just bring the spirit. That's why I look at the spirit as more of a, a fabric that flows that your it's your whole life. It's just your whole life. So that's, that's where I see that joy connecting into and the spirit connecting into what you do with that, but it has to be you doing it. It can't be, oh, uh, well, I'm going to complain, 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 complain. This happened. It's happening to me. This happens is God's fault. And this whole notion of, I blame God for things. How could God let this happen? That, you know, I'm just like, I know that's another ginormous topic we would have for another day. But if that's, you you just, you have to take an active role. That's what the spirit is all about. Having the spirit flow through you is taking an active role. And that means, and no, it doesn't mean you have to run for office. It can mean something simple, like, read the bill if there's if you know or go to a go to a, a a nonpartisan meeting go to a school board meeting and and listen to them debate about whether or not they should raise your taxes so we're go. looking at because our country is partisan yeah we are very partisan and i've heard people say it doesn't matter which party you were they're they're all crooks yeah maybe so you know we paint with these broad brushes Yep. What are some of the things I can do as I determine to enter into the world of partisan politics as a biblical citizen? How can I, how, how do I start to make my decisions? Well, guess what wasn't partisan, right? The Declaration of Independence was not partisan. In right. fact, George Washington warned us against partisan politics. Mm -hmm. He said they could be the end of us. And the, he guided us away from that. Of course, we didn't listen. We're a partisan country. Right. That's a stray away. Uh, you, you wisely mentioned that. That's a stray away from what the founding fathers really wanted us to see. Not a loyalty to a party above all else. Right. but a loyalty to the biblical principles contained in our founding documents above all else. So we have straight, but we are now a partisan government. How do I know? I mean, do I just stay on the side and continue to operate without being a part of any party? Or how can I tell which party I want to support, I want to be a part of. What do I do if I'm part of a party that doesn't have any genuine political clout? I mean, they're the two big parties and then they're the other parties who are many who don't operate in structure like the two big parties. Right. And so it's often difficult how do how do i know what a party believes how do i know what a party why they're there how do i get into this thing and make some decisions on my starting place as i am becoming active as a citizen in a partisan mm -hmm. country so so our and we'll assume that you are a biblical you have a biblical right. worldview correct okay so one of the things that I know for for sure the, that both parties have is they have platforms, right? And they'll, they call them planks in their platforms. So you got to go do your homework. And I suggest that you do your homework with the party platform, not the 
spokesperson or, you know, this one or that one, because there's different versions and flavors of each partisan group, right? You have conservatives, you have moderates, you have liberals or um, radicals, whatever you want to call it. Um, and we've always had this. This isn't new. I mean, you think, go back to the Civil War. We know how to do this. We do our homework. We go and we go on there. What You go to rnc.org or dnc.org or whatever it is, and you look at the platforms. And then you start asking the questions. Does this match with or modify what I know to be true? And then everywhere you see no, no, no. What if it's mostly yes, except for a couple of no's? What do you do with that? Right? Maybe you have the power to influence. If it's mostly yes, but there's a couple of no's, maybe you have that power to influence, to say, hmm, I agree with you on 90%, but these two pieces here, I can't agree with. So what, and how important are they to me? Is it deal breaking? If it's not deal breaking, can I influence that? Can I, can I get involved and influence that? And where and how do I start? Well, if it's the party's platform, you start with your local party. You have to. And this is where people run a run aground somewhat. But um, maybe, maybe the local party says, we don't care what you think. We're not changing it. So it can be, that's where you need patience and self-control, right? Mm -hmm. Where you can... Yeah, and because you may have it may you may have to wait your turn to have your voice heard. You may have to ask the right questions of the right people. But to get started, you have to look at ask this, go to the parties themselves, the partisans, right? Now you maybe you just want to be an independent. And then you want to look at each influential candidate yourself. Maybe you don't want to be a partisan. Maybe you just, because you don't feel like you can be a partisan. Maybe you just want to be an independent. And that, and I was this for years. I was an independent. And so I would look at a candidate and I would say, does this match with or modify what I know to be true? What this person is saying. Um, I this These days it's very confusing because there's so many different uh, versions of a partisan element you know the party party has a platform but then the people in the party don't follow the platform so just as, it's, just as we have a constitution but our yeah. legislators don't follow the constitution yeah. and they say well it's not our job to follow the constitution it's the supreme court they have to they have to decide you know so so but i i think if you're going to choose the partisan pathway you need to go to the party itself and that's one of the things that our our ladies group does is we focus on supporting the partisan platform of our party. And that means you have the right as a member of the party to, as a registered person, because you got to register, right? You've said, my name is, and I live here, and this is, I'm a part, I'm, I'm officially a partisan. You have the right to hold people's feet to the fire. So if your elected officials are not promoting the platform of the party, then you have the right to say, excuse me, I don't see that in this, le in this legislation you're, you're pushing or sponsoring or whatever. I don't see that in the platform because the platform says this, right? So that is, so it's, and it's up to you to do this because if you don't, they're going to do whatever they want. Whatever makes, you know, if they've got lobbyists, K Street or lobbyists, Frankfurt lobbyists, um, helping them out. You know, we've seen if you look at KREF, certain things, if you have a if you have a um a concern about, say, the big pharma, you just type in uh, a big pharma name and into KREF and see what you come up with. You can see who all got donations from that place. Understand the rules too. Understand the rules of the party. That's another piece too. And it's because it's it's about play, you got to play by the rules, right? So you got to know what the rules are first, right? Not just on the biggest level, but on on the individual party levels. Like 
<clears throat> one thing that we're seeing right now is this notion of taking someone off the ballot. Well, problem is you're telling a party that they can't nominate the person they want to nominate based on something you made up. So it's the party, right? That's that's being um, given that that's having their their rules thwarted by something somebody just made up. I know that's a little odd. It sounds weird, Denise, but it's the party has rules and you need to know what the rules are. Because if you don't think the rules are fair, you have to figure out how can I change or influence the change of the rules. Some parties are designed not to let that happen. They don't want you in there changing the rules. They're not interested in grassroots activism. And that's a problem. <laughs> so you got to figure out that too. There's a lot of stuff going on there. So, but it starts with the planks of the platform and understanding of the structure, what how it all works, how it all fits together. And then yeah. you can decide, is this where I want to go and the path I want to be on? Where can I influence? But I really, I think it all goes back to that verse, having patience and self-control and letting the spirit of love guide and influence your whole activity. It's all, those are all active things. Yes. And because um, we are humans, mm -hmm. we are very good at living at less than our desired goal. Yep. We do that. That's too long. And as, so as we're wrapping up, mm -hmm. I want to, first of all, thank you, Pam, for being all in. I grew up in a, in a church where our pastor often quoted, I don't, I don't know who he was quoting, but he was a quote, mm -hmm. knew it was a quote. And it was a quote that I hear now only half quoted. Mm -hmm. And the quote is, my country, wrong or right. And people want to stop there. And, and, but that's not the whole quote. The rest of the quote is, if right, to keep it right, if wrong, to set it right. Mm -hmm. And we, as biblical citizens, have to understand no one is going to set this country on a biblical course except biblical people. Right. If we continue to say, I'm out of the process, I'm not gonna run for office, I'm not gonna vote for good candidates, I'm just gonna sit on the sidelines and pray. Mm -hmm. And every Bible believing American is sitting on the sidelines and praying. Where are we gonna get the Bible believing candidates? They're sitting on the sidelines praying. <laughs> true. What we don't understand is prayer is not telling God what he needs to do. Prayer is going to God for your marching orders for today. And if we are truly praying, we are asking God, what must I do to be the salt and light in this dark and tasteless political environment in which I find myself? That's what praying is about. It's not God fix it. Mm -hmm. It's what must I do to be a part of the solution? And then as we step in, let's go back and read our declaration, read our Magna Carta, read the Magna Carta, it wasn't really ours, read the Magna Carta, one of the first government documents for this land. Read mm -hmm. the Declaration of Independence. Read the Constitution, including the Bill of Rights. Read what, read the journals that tell you what the founding fathers were thinking when they proposed the Constitution and the Bill of Rights and even the Declaration. Go back and find out what was the premise and then do the same thing for the platforms of our political parties. 
I don't know how many parties have platforms. I know the big two do. <laughs> I know the big two do, but I don't know if anybody else does. I've honestly I, never. You know, I think but, I, I think some of them do. I think a lot. I, I of would them imagine do. that they do. And so let's find, see, here I've got homework for me too. Let's go out <laughs> and read those platforms. Let's find out which one comes right back to the biblical foundation on which this country was laid. And how far have they strayed? And then when I choose to get involved, I choose hopefully, to get involved with the one that has strayed the least <laughs> yeah, yeah, and has the most opportunity to effect change. See, and I think if you, if, if you want to stay positive, if you don't want to, you know, get disappointed, I think if you, you think about the pebble in the pond, right? Mm -hmm. If, for example, here in our county, it's primarily one party, and that can be difficult because if you're not in that party, you don't get it. You don't get to, there's no opposition. It's just that party. And so after the primaries, it's all over with. But if you're going to be able to influence thinking to your, to what you believe is to be, is true, you may need to start that small rather than trying to boil the ocean. You may need to start with my magistrate is a registered is registered in this one particular party and i agree with the platform of that party but i don't see this person espousing that exactly. so i'm going to call this person up and say hey do you have time to have some coffee let's go to coffee i'll buy you a cup of coffee but i want to understand why blah, blah 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 and before you know it that that can take form and shape and that can influence not just that person, but it gives that person because if everybody stays silent, how are how are our elected officials supposed to know what to do? Exactly. How are they supposed to know? They just get they get no feedback and they're like, oh, I mean, we we did this town hall, but it should have been a packed house with a hundred, you know, we have sixty five thousand people in our county. And we had 25 or 30 in that town hall. Why? You know, we should have had a lot of people in the town hall. So. And so it, it is. We have all straight. Forget it. There's no perfect anything politically. Mm -hmm. The documents, though, are pretty good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And they're not partisan either. They, yes, are, and because, they are not partisan. because where they go back to, they go back to a belief. Yes. And our, and our biblical worldview, that's where, that's the, that's where they come from. Yes. And so, why, yeah. Do we, do we even know why we established a constitution for the United States of America? It's, it starts with we, the people. Yeah. In order and the next to form thing, a more perfect union. A more, more perfect perfect union yeah. we not know the perfect stuff. we're always moving to a better place yes. and we write this constitution to help us understand what that can look like yeah yeah and that constant again and we then we have to take it back and the constitution is built on what the biblical principles are right but the fact that it says more perfect is a key mm -hmm. point because it doesn't say it is perfect. No. A more perfect. Yeah. So we are always striving for more perfect. So yeah. this notion that, like, say, some of the founders, they, they didn't abolish slavery in the Constitution originally because right. they were saying more perfect. We got there. It took 100 years, but we got there. Yes. And we will continue to get there. Yes. And again, you, you have to keep looking at the framework because when that constitution was written, there was not a single country in the world that believed in the nope. end of slavery. Nope, not one. And we dared 
to put in writing that all men are created equal and endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, including life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We dared to put that in writing, even when we ourselves were not living by it. Right. At the time, but they, but we, right. it's a, it's, what is it? Martin Luther King used to call it. That was our promissory note. Yes. That was the promissory note and a more perfect union. That means I have the right to collect on that promise. You have the right yes. to collect on that promise yes. and collecting on that promise is what I do when I go to a magistrate meeting yes. and I talk to the six district yes. magistrate about something that's on my mind or a yes. school board meeting when I want to understand what they're going to do and, and in everything they do. Right. So that this is where that applies. This is where that connects. I don't need to be president of the United States. I'm all good being Pam Craddock here in LaGrange, biblical citizen, active, you know, taking an active role in my partisan politics of choice because I can. Yeah. And, and because it most closely fits my biblical worldview. Yes. And I want to encourage those who are watching, if you're interested in this, you want to learn some more about this. There are several good sources. There are probably multiple good sources, but mm -hmm. I have found a few that I tag on to so far. Um, one is the, the courses offered by Hillsdale College. I was going to mention that. They are fantastic. Yes. Yeah. And they have a free course on the Constitution. Uh, yes, they do. A lot of their stuff is free. They have they yes. do offer free online courses that you can take. They're completely self-study. So you all I, all you what you do need to do, though, is commit yourself to completing it. Yeah. Start it and complete. It. Always. So, yeah. You got to yeah. just once you start it, you got to finish it. Now, and those are kind of solo. You said they're self-study. There's not going to be a group around you. You can, no, but you can pull a group together. And oh, just, yeah, and, right. But I'm, what I'm they, just saying, they are designed. Right, no, right. Now, the next step is to get involved with group study. Mm -hmm. First, bring a group into Hillsdale mm -hmm. College Studies. And that's a great Maybe way to get you involved. you and your family. Do it with you yes. and your family. yes. And the second course along the same lines is the Patriot Academy, patriotacademy.org. Happy place. And they are set up to put you into a group. Yep. So if, if you're kind of, oh, I want to look into this, but I don't want my family to know. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Or you're not, I mean, let's be real. You this be is brave. a giant you gotta step be brave. Well, this is a giant step forward. And before you can yeah. be brave, sometimes you have to know why you should be brave. Yeah. And so yeah. if you're at that baby, baby step of, I want to learn, but I don't know anybody that I want to tell that I want to learn. I'm learning. Yeah, no, you're totally right. You're right? absolutely right. So Patriot Academy, if you go to patriotacademy.org, they have something called find a class. And you can look by the state you live in and they will tell you who is offering classes on biblical citizenship and constitutional life. There's also constitutional defense. Um, but those classes, if they're familiar. not in your community, many of them are also offered as Zoom classes. And they will allow you to not only study with other people, study with people from around the country mm -hmm. who are still and, asking the same question you are. How do I get involved? So I would encourage that as a next step. Bef if, 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 you know, even before you become involved in a party, and please don't take 20 years to do this. This is like for the next, <laughs> get no. all this done in a year. But yeah, I think we're at the beginning part of the year. Make this your goal for summer to get by summertime. I will have, I will have completed a study on either the declaration. Well, the study I did on the constitution incorporates both the declaration of independence and the constitution from Hillsdale. Yes. I think they're like six to eight weeks, technically long. 
Yeah. Um, there, there's plenty of opportunity for feedback. It's a traditional college course, right? So it's a lecture series plus reading plus, you know, test taking, and you can, you can check your knowledge and everything. So it's, it's that. And then, then in the, in the Patriot Academy, you get to kind of, if you wanted to think of it this way, you could take it to the next step because one of the things that Rick Green does that is so awesome is he puts, he puts you right there. He connects all the dots and he does it all the way. And in his experience as a representative in the Texas state house, all the way up through, uh, what if I just want to send an email to my house guy, you know, and whatever, you know, I'm just, he just goes all the way through it. He, he connects the dots in that practical application. So that one's, that one's awesome. So, um, and then there's book clubs too. Um, I think in our group, our ladies group, we're going to start a book club. Mm -hmm. I think yeah, one of the, yeah, just in just certain ways of looking at things because for, for women in particular, for some reason, if, if the rest of your world is going crazy, uh, you should rearrange all your cabinets and get control of your kitchen. And then you feel like you've got control. So if you educate yourself with just certain things, if you step in, take an active role in edifying yourself, um, knowledge is power, right? And you don't feel helpless. You feel powerful. And then when you connect in God's word and the Holy Spirit, wow, unstoppable. Exactly. Pam, this has been phenomenal time together. Uh, we can take so much. <laughs> We've said nothing. We've said everything. Yeah. The point is. We fix the whole world. Well, I think we've shown the whole world to be broken. Yeah. <laughs> it's more what we've done. But, if, you know, it's not but new, though. It's not it's new. Broken. It has always, always been is. broken. It will not be fixed until the Lord's return. But we mm -hmm. cannot hide behind the Lord's return. Right. As right. Well, we'll just wait for the Lord's return. We can work on making it a more perfect world. Yes. More we can perfect. work on bringing the image of Christ into the world that we currently have. Because that's why we are left here once yes. we know him. That's a great deal about why there is mining the gold. I'm learning to be a better citizen but I have also been reinforced with the knowledge that I cannot be the best citizen if I am not a strong biblicist, if I do not know the word. And the Mining the Gold podcast, which are gonna take you through 190 plus points of scripture that show us what it means to be a follower of Christ and how to apply that to your life. It starts there. So while you're learning about your country, please learn about your faith. Please <laughs> learn about join us Tuesday and Thursday morning, 7 a.m. Eastern time. We post on Facebook and YouTube. The websites are on the screen for you to see. Not only watch us yourself, like us so that your friends see what you're watching. Invite your friends to join us. Share us directly with someone that you think would be interested in a particular topic. Follow us, subscribe to us. But Mining the Gold is more than Facebook and YouTube. It's a book. It's a book with all of these readings in one spot that will take you systematically through your walk with Christ. And it has a sister book called Nuggets of Gold, which takes the same 190 plus topics and asks pointed questions about what you are doing with this gold that God has placed in your hands, not to condemn, but to inspire and encourage. Power of our relationship could be a chapter <laughs> in mining the gold about relationships, the very various relationships that we have as human beings 
and how scripture speaks to them and some ways we might be implementing those in our lives as we think outside the box of what society says should be going on and begin to look at possibilities that God has posed for us in our relationships. They can all be purchased. You can scan that QR code. It will take you straight to the page that's cited here, bit.ly slash Denise Books. You can also go to amazon.com and find these books. And if you just have some thoughts and want to bounce some of this off the author, if you will, there's my email address, dwattswilson at gmail.com. I do read and answer my emails. Now, it might take a day, but I do that. Um, let's make a movement out of mining the gold as we are <laughs> on our way to becoming biblical citizens of a country whose foundation is the word of God. You can take a screen. <laughs> you say there's your copy. I got my copy. Yes, I got indeed. a copy of this one too. <laughs> All right. You've got the nuggets and the mining. I do. Um, I, I'm grateful for both of them. If you'll screenshot this page, you will have all of this information permanently at your disposal, especially the contact information for today's co-host. And that has been Pam Craddock, phcraddock at icloud.com. The website for the partisan group that she has helped organize and is leading is www.LibertyLadiesClub.com. Again, we are not here to tell you you need to be what we are, except that you need to engage the political process in the country in which you live, especially if it's the United States of America, with a biblical worldview, which is the worldview of those who established this country. That's all this is about. But Pam, thank you for being the one to step out in front of the firing line and dare to talk about this topic in public. Well, thank you, Denise. This is, you're amazing. You, you really are. And you just, you, you don't meet too many people that just say, I think I'll write a book. Okay, I'll honestly go write another one. Maybe I'll write a third one. <laughs> so that's you. So you're an awesome inspiration. Well, thank you. But I'm, as I like to say, I'm an ordinary child of an extraordinary father. There and you go. Every one of us are. We if are. You that's true. That's tap true. in. I, I, I salute my grandson who tapped into the music that God has given him and has produced the music that surrounds our broadcast each day. And I salute Roy Dominique, the literary agent who uses the skills and resources at his disposal to take something that I never had any idea could go beyond the trunk of my car and has is getting it in front of a standard publishing house who wants to put it in front of the world that continues to blow my mind. But that's them using their gifts to support me using my gifts. And I hope you will jump in there and find your gift to give mm -hmm. to the world while yeah. you are daily mining the gold in God's word. Thank you so much.